Hello, my dear friends, and welcome. My name is Vicki Hatch, and this is Even So It Is Well. Today, I'm going to share some research about MS diets, my thoughts on MS diets, and a bit of a rant. Yep, get ready. Here are some of the things I have read or heard about MS diets. There's no such thing as an MS diet. There's no one diet that helps with MS. There's no definitive diet that has been scientifically proven to be beneficial in changing the course of MS. There's a common theme here. Did you see it? Let's look again. These statements all contain the word no at the beginning of the statement. As I am a glass is half full of Prosecco and refillable kind of girl, I don't naturally gravitate toward the negative, but a bit of a rant, if I may. Telling MS patients or any patient of any disease no over and over again when it comes to diet is a disservice in my humble opinion. I would like to change the narrative a bit. Here is what I would change these phrases to. Diet is very important to living well with MS. There are many dietary changes we can make to help with MS. There are scientifically proven benefits that show improving your diet can help with some of the most debilitating symptoms of MS. See what I did there? Words matter. Changing from negative phrasing to positive phrasing can have a huge effect on how the information is conveyed. Do you agree? If you do, give me a like or put it in the comments below. I have seen many dismiss dietary changes completely because they don't believe it will help due to the negative messaging they are seeing and hearing. Today, I'm going to do my best to change some minds. Let's start with a list of the most popularly known MS diets. There is the Overcoming MS Diet, which is part of a bigger program, the Swank Diet, the Walls Diet, also part of a bigger protocol, the Best Bet Diet, the McDougal diet, not MS specific, and the Mediterranean diet, also not MS specific. And I will put links in the description below for information on all these diets if you'd like to check them out. While it is true that there's limited research on diets, because who's going to fund research on something that's not going to make any organization or company lots of money, but that's a rant for another video. There is some research, so let's go. Dr. Swank's research. In 1949, Dr. Roy Swank enrolled 150 people in a study where participants ate a low saturated fat diet and he followed them for 34 years. At the end, there were 144 participants where 72 were good dieters, consuming fewer than 20 grams a day of saturated fat and the other 72 could not keep saturated fat consumption below 20 grams a day. The discussion showed, our findings indicate that a diet of 20 grams of saturated fat daily was best able to keep patients with MS ambulant and working. And in recent years, we have observed that patients consuming 10 to 15 grams a day or less had even better improvements in energy and fatigue levels. Sounds great, right? Critics of this study say the assessments were not blinded and there were no MRIs back then so they could look for lesions, so they dismissed these findings. And I find this very odd. Why would you dismiss something as significant as being able to walk and work and less fatigue? Yes, I agree it has some limitations and perhaps some bias, but observational studies have a place and they, what they observed was nothing short of amazing. The Holism Study The Healthy Outcomes in Lifestyle in a Sample of People with Multiple Sclerosis It was another observational study, and a large one, with 2,500 participants, where they looked at diet and lifestyle modifications. In the diet portion, they compared participants who did and did not eat meat, and those who did had 17% lower physical quality of life scores and 23% higher 12-month relapse rates and participants who did and did not consume dairy. Those who did had 16% lower physical quality of life scores and a 21% higher 12-month relapse rate. Again, critics of this study said it was observational only. Next, a low-fat plant-based diet in multiple sclerosis, 
a randomized control trial. In this randomized control trial, they found that the diet group showed significant improvements in measures of fatigue, BMI, and metabolic biomarkers. Significant improvements. Side note, comorbid conditions are more prevalent in people with MS, so it's important to eat a healthy diet. And lastly, impact of the Swank and Walls elimination dietary interventions on fatigue and quality of life in relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis, the WAVES randomized parallel arm clinical trial. It concluded both diets were associated with clinically meaningful within group reductions in fatigue and improvements in quality of life. Huh. Fatigue and cog fog are the number one reasons why MS patients leave work. Some would argue they're the most impactful on the lives of people with MS. Here's the thing. Healthy diets do help with fatigue. It's proven and we have the evidence. We should be shouting from the rooftops, healthy diets that include whole real foods are proven to de decrease fatigue. Am I right? In addition to being a glasses half full kind of girl, I'm also very curious and a geek. Shortly after my diagnosis, I started researching into anything and everything I could do to help with my MS. I found that the Overcoming MS program had the most evidence behind it and was most in, in line with what I consider to be a healthy diet. I've also taken a course in plant-based nutrition and received a certificate from E. Cornell. With this additional education, I have refined my diet a bit more to give my body the best possible chance to be healthy. What I would like to point out about all the MS diets is they have a lot more in common than they do different. They all advocate eating real whole foods. They all advocate eating lots of nutrient dense foods. They all recommend eliminating processed foods and food like products. I encourage you to look at the research, look at your diet and see where you can make changes. You may just improve your fatigue, quality of life, and perhaps relapse rate simply by what you put at the end of your fork. Words matter. Our diet matters. We have some control over how our disease manifests and how our future health will be. I invite you to look at the glass as half full and see past the negative phrasing. Yes, we can live well with our MS. The question of the day is, do you believe diets can improve our quality of life? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Until next time, my friends, be well.